I go, let me go to F3. That is gonna go to F3. And then I think this is gonna be checkmate. And that's it. Let me just show you the position, the final position. And I think this is already more than more than good. So excellent. This is the, the final position. Excellent checkmate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay guys, so I think we are live, different day of the week. What I wanted to do uh, then, I wanted to do a quick blindfold exercise uh, with you. Now, when it comes to blindfold training, you, we, typically when I, do, when I do it with my students, we start really slow. So we start with, okay, if there's a piece on D4, uh, let's say there's a knight, how many steps would it take you to get to maybe G7? Or if there's a knight on B1, how many steps would it take you to get to G8 and, and so on. So things like that, of course, this is assuming that they already are familiar with the coordinates. This is assuming that uh, they're familiar with the color of the pieces, of the board. So if you close your eyes, can you, can you say if D4 is light or dark? Can you say if G6 is light or dark? So this is something that we got to get comfortable with first and then we start doing these exercises. Eventually, we get to do checkmate in one move, checkmate in two moves. And, and so on. What I wanted to do with you today before we start playing against each other, um, I wanted to play a game against, let me actually make this uh, full screen. So I wanted us to play against one of these engines, one of, this, um, of the very easy ones, but I wanted to do it blindfold. So I wanna see if you can keep track of the moves, if you can keep track of the pieces on the board. And what I do with my students the first time they play a game like this, is just about, about how far they can get in the game before it gets blurry, before it gets really confusing. But let's see if we can, if we can actually do it until the end. Okay, so we have blindfold pieces. They should remove everything. Um, choose, I'm gonna hit play, and then, guys, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to put it over here. There we go. Perfect. So you should be paying attention to the coordinates that are going to pop up over here. So I'm going to do the first move. So that's going to be pawn to e4, and you're going to see it over here. Now, before anything, let me know if you can clearly see those coordinates. Is it clear or is it hard to, hard to see? All right, clear. Everyone can see it. Perfect. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to remove... Uh, okay, let me remove this. And let's take it from there. So we're playing this game. Now, notice what it says here. E4, my opponent just did E5. So E4, E5. So, so far, I have a pawn on E4. My opponent has a pawn on E5. Now, I'm going to continue. I'm going to do knight F3. And let me see if he takes it. Okay, there you go. So knight F3, that's my next move. Guys, try to keep track of this. If you're not that experienced, it might get confusing really quickly. But so far, we have knight C6. So E4, E5 knight f3 knight to c6 all right i'm gonna go bishop c4 now does anyone know the name of this opening that we got to so far anyone anyone at all okay italian game perfect perfect okay so we got the italian in place now my opponent's last move was bishop c5 so this is a pretty standard variation of the of the italian game and now i'm just going to go ahead and castle so guys really try hard to visualize what's going on now, my opponent did d6, and now let me set up this little trick. Let me go, if I go knight to g5, guys, what am I trying to do? Those of you who can actually um, who can actually visualize, visualize the position. Okay, yeah, same ideas in, in the fried liver, you're right. So we're just trying to get, so since we have a bishop on um, on c4, the knight on, on g5 will be trying to get to, to f7. Perfect. So f7, yeah, we're trying to hit that queen and the rook. So let's do it. Guys, you're actually better than I, I was expecting. <laughs> All right, knight g5. Now, look at this, knight h6. So immediately the knight is coming over to, to defend. Now, notice that the queen um, the queen could have probably gotten that, that knight. No big deal. Now, let me go ahead and do... You know what? I don't think this is sound, but let's give it a try. So I'm going to go... Hmm, should I... Now, quick question for you guys. What piece can I bring over to add more pressure to, to f7? So I have one bishop on c4, one knight on g5. What other piece can I bring out to put pressure on that square? Uh, Tommy, if you're new, uh, after this exercise, uh, all you have to do is leave your chess.com username in the chat and I'm going to send you guys a challenge, okay? All right, queen, let's do it. I'm going to bring that queen all the way to, to h5. And that would be another piece putting pressure on, on f7. So I'm going to go for that, queen h5. And now we have three pieces putting pressure on, on f7. All right, so black pieces castle. 
So right now we have the king, the rook, and the knight defending. Now I wonder if I could I wonder if I could put some some pressure at all. Um all right, queen f3, queen f3, very good. Guys, any candidate moves at any point, any candidate moves that we could do from this moment on. If you already got confused, you got lost, you don't know where the pieces are, feel free to look at the coordinates and do it all over in your head. Actually, let me go ahead and, and do that. So we have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, the Italian game, and the black pieces did bishop c5. From that moment on, we just went castle, and the black pieces went pawn to d6. So after pawn to d6, we started knight to g5, trying to put pressure on f7, knight h6, queen h5, and now they simply castled. All right, so d3 I see over here. I can see, <laughs> of course you're not supposed to see. We're doing blindfold, guys. This is a quick blindfold game. After, we're just gonna go ahead and play against, uh, against each other, okay? So d3 to open up the bishop, absolutely. So let's go with that and let's see what they're going to do c4 interesting move absolutely yeah d3 perfect now our opponent just did knight to d4 now what is that knight, what is that knight trying to trying to get to well trying to get to to c2 and of course that's going to be a a free pawn and probably they're gonna get their rook as well now the question is do we do we care well just for the sake of complicating things even more, I'm going to go ahead and take on f7. Now, if I take on f7, I know that they could take back um, with the knight, and I shouldn't take because they have the rook and the king, but that pin could start to complicate things. So let's go for it. I'm gonna go knight f7, and of course, the knight took back. So at this point, we have the bishop pinning uh, the knight, and we have the queen putting pressure as well, but we, we need more pieces to help out. Uh, maybe the knight, maybe bring the rook over. Now, before we go on and do the next move, let me know guys in the chat if you can see this position clearly or if you can see it blurry, okay? <laughs> I know, I know it's confusing. Let me know if it's, conf if it's confusing, then I'm just gonna show you the position and then we continue from, from there, okay? Ah, excellent, perfect. Let thank you for letting me know, okay? A bit confusing, okay? Fading, okay, yeah, it should be a little bit blurry now, so let me do this, I'm going to change uh, the pieces. So instead of blindfold, I'm gonna go back to, I think, what did I have? I think I had Neo. Okay guys, so this is the position that we have. So, so far, this is what we did. We did e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. Everyone followed up to this point. We castled in d6. And then, this is when I said, the, the queen could have gotten the knight when we did knight g5. Now, of course, they didn't take knight h6. So now, queen h5, bringing more pressure on f7, and then the black piece is castled. So d3, uh, Jefferson said d3 to develop the bishop, knight d4, and we talked about the knight being able to collect on c2. So now I said, you know what, let's complicate things, and now, even though we sacrifice the knight, we still have some kind of pressure here, but we gotta act quickly, we gotta look for a way to complicate this even more. So guys, take a look at this position, because I'm going to make it disappear again, and we go from here. But I'll give you some time to, get back on it, then I'm going to make it blindfold one more time. And please think of what you do next. I already have a move in mind, but I want to know what you guys have, have in mind. Okay, guys, uh, practice uh, exercises or things that we could do, and if you do it systematically, definitely you're going to improve. A good way to remember what the pieces are, try to see the connection. Okay, I have a bishop on c4 defended by a pawn. I have the king is castled perfectly, all, all of the pawns are there. I haven't developed the, the queen side pieces. So all of those things are going to help you remember. All right, guys, so look, uh, one move that nobody has mentioned in this position. Ah, okay, you got close. Bishop a6, interesting. Now, um, the move is actually, the other move that I'm thinking of is bishop g5. Interesting move. I'm hitting that queen, and of course, the knight is being pinned. So it's a good way to bring more pieces into the game. So bishop g5, I like b4. Um, so we gotta pick one of those two. F4, aha, look, I wanna make this, I wanna make this F4 work, but if I do F4 right now, notice how they're gonna be doing a discovery on, on my king, right? So let me actually, um, mm, 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 yep, uh, so let me just go here and anything else, nice move before. yeah, I think B4 has to be the move. So I'm gonna go with uh, B4 
And then the idea is that if they take the free pawn, we can go ahead and, and fork. And guys, we don't really care if they go here and get the rook. It's not that big a deal to drop pieces. We already dropped the knight voluntarily. So this is all about going after that king. If I could deflect this bishop and insert f4, then this is a different, different story. So let's go with b4, but first let me make this blindfold. And blindfold right here. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to go pawn to b4. And let's see what my opponent is going to do. Okay, so bishop b6, <laughs> he doesn't really care about, about that pawn. Okay, so we're going to go then knight a3 now. That way we protect c2. All right, fair enough. Okay, queen f6. And I think it's time to do bishop g5. I don't know what you guys think. Um, now, if I go bishop g5, queen g6, hmm, maybe not a good idea. I really want to make f4 work. I have to tell you that. So maybe bishop e3. Nah. All right, guys, scan the moves. Come on. <laughs> All right, look, if you forget the position, just try to remember more or less. Uh, also, if the bishop is on c1, well, uh, try to look at the, at the square that you have available and, and so on. And guys, this is nothing. In this case, we have the board. Wait until we get to the point where, not, of course, not today. But you're going to get to a point where you do blindfold with not even the board. So that's even more. Yep, you got it. All right, let's do bishop g5. Now, bishop g5, I'm concerned because they could do queen g6. And we might have to trade queens. But anyways, let's go bishop g5, develop with the tempo. Queen g6, I knew. You know what? This, this engine is playing, defending really well for an 850. But it is what it is. All right, so we cannot take because the pawn takes back. And... The thing is that we're just going to be uh, getting rid of our best attacking piece. So I think we're just going to stay... <laughs> uh, guys, don't worry. It's just going to be a few more minutes. When we're done, we're going to play regular chess against each other. But it's, it's good training. Now, I'm going to do a few more moves. And if we're not done, I'm going to show you the position again. And then we go blindfold one more time. All right. So my queen, I don't want to trade it. So I'm going to go back. Queen h4. And now we got pawn to a6. All right, guys, so time to find a way to make f4 work. All right, so I'm going to go king h1. And after this move, guys, I'm going to show you the position one more time. So king h1. And now we got pawn to c6. So sorry for the confuse, uh, confusion, but let me see. Perfect. All right, so take a look at this position. I'll give you some time, and then I'm going to make it go away again. Use this time to... Remember what the pieces are. Remember to look at your pieces as a group. So these two are connected. You got the bishop pinning a knight. You have uh, your knight defending c2. And now you know we want to make this open for, for the rook. So take your time and try to come up also with candidate moves. Yeah, I see I see, I see, see it clearly, guys, even without, without the board. But this is after many years training. Also, you have to know this, once you get to a level of 2000, even if you don't do blindfold training regularly, you should be able to play a blindfold game, a decent blindfold game, uh, if you get to 2000. And in other words, if you train chess overall, in general, you're going to be able to visualize the board and the pieces. But of course, there are, it's a good idea to make blindfold training part of your overall training. Not too much, but it just incorporate it from time to time. All right. So bishop e7, ooh, bishop e7 is interesting, but I would like to do it after after f4. Well, you you get there, my friend. You get there. Uh, looking at certain playing for a role. I have to agree. I have to agree. Okay, so let's do it. Um, f4 is gonna be the move first. Let me remove the pieces. Mm. Okay, so blindfold, gun, and here we go. Pawn to f4. Okay, so now 92. Guys, 92 is coming in. Uh, there's not even a check or anything like that. Now, is that knight attacking anything? Well, you gotta pay attention to it. Uh, any weird checks, anything like that. Now, I have a question for you. Are the rooks connected or not really? All right, rooks are connected, so that means we could take on we could take on e5. So let's go for it. Okay, so now we got pawn to h6. So, all right, guys, so look at this. We got to this position, and I hope that you can visualize this. The queen is on h4, uh, bishop is on g5, and 
so far we have the bishop and the rook putting pressure on f7. Now, that knight that is on f7, we know that it's defended by the king and the rook. Now, this pawn is attacking our, our bishop. So the question is, what should we what should we do? Yeah, it's attacking our bishop, good, excellent. Bishop e7, all right, let's do it. So bishop e7, we're putting pressure on the rook. Now, this is pawn a5. I don't think that's good. Okay, guys, this should be easy to finish now, even, even if you're not that good with blindfold yet. Follow through, follow through. All right, we take the rook. All right, man, you, you took this on. All right, queen g2. So what do we do? We already took the rook. Uh, we took on f8. Now, what about uh, their, their last move? Their queen went over and took the took the pawn on g2. So what do we do? <laughs> You're like, why are you asking these questions, man? All right, so we get the queen. So they know they're in trouble. So they're just giving some pieces back. Now, knight goes to d4. And I guess we can follow through now. Um, can we just do rook takes? Yeah, I think I'm going to go. Guys, should we do rook takes or should we do bishop takes? Take your time. Make sure that this is all you. Even if the position is blurry, you have no idea where the pieces are. We know. We just got a rook over here. And bishop and rook could collect on f7. Only the king is defending now. And of course, our queen is on h4. So the question is, do we take on f7 with a check and let them take the bishop? Or do we take with a rook? And we're getting closer to that king with a rook, a bishop, and a queen. Rook takes. All right, I'm gonna go with you. Um, all right, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you more about this when we finish, and I'm gonna give you other tips that you guys could do when you play blindfold. Um, but I don't want these guys to get to get distracted because then they blunder a piece and they're like, "Oh, you were talking, or you were saying this." <laughs> All right, rook takes e7. Well, now we have knight f5. Don't forget that knight is going to be... Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. You said rook g7? Yeah. Now, don't forget that knight is defending g7. That knight is also uh, attacking the rook. I mean, attacking the queen, sorry. So, take your time here. This one should be a very, very easy move. Queen f6. Now, come on, guys. Look, let me do this for you. Look. Uh, queen h7. Nope. Look, there is a bishop on c4, there is a rook on f7, and the black king is on g8. So what do you think we should do? So we have bishop, we have bishop on f8, rook on f7, and bishop on f7. The black king is on g8. And they just moved their knight to f5. Rook g7, okay, rook g7 is a double check. So we could do rook g7, check with the rook, check with the bishop protected by this bishop, so there's no way that the knight could take. Also, you could have done rook takes knight, that's fine too. Now, let's go with this one, so that's a check. Now, the king goes to h8, and now what do we do, guys? What do we do? How do we finish this? Come on. Okay, clueless at this point, rook g8, okay, we got someone that is still, still at least the king's side uh, remembers. Okay, rook g8, rook g8 again, perfect. Guys, now, rook g8, defended by this bishop, so... There you go. Only move is to go king h7. And now at that point, look, we got our bishop on c8. I mean, I'm sorry, on c4. Our rook is on g8. Bishop is on f8. Queen is on h4. That king is by itself on h7. So the question to you is, do you think this move is checkmate or no? Is queen h6 checkmate? Remember the bishop is over here. And this bishop is defending the rook on g8. Blindfold, we're playing this game blindfold. Look at the notation on the side. Queen h6, okay, I have Jefferson saying queen h6, Christopher, queen h6, checkmate. Uh, queen h6, queen h6, thank you. Knight is on f5, oh, where are you? Knight is on f5, guys. Those of you who said queen h6, checkmate, <laughs> you forgot about the knight defending h6. Come on, come on. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to show you the position, and again, just like we did before, come up with candidate moves. Uh, I think it was Neo. There we go. All right, take a look at this position. We're still winning by a lot, and I'm pretty sure checkmate should be in the air. So, candidate moves. Take a look at it. In a few, in a few minutes or a few seconds, I'm going to 
remove the pieces again. Once more, try to look at the pieces as a group. Uh, I have a bishop defending a rook, rook defending a bishop, and see if you could incorporate more pieces into this attack. Please take your time. <laughs> Rook f1, um, I don't like that they could do d5, inter interference, and then the bishop is not defending anymore. So I think I'm going to do e takes d6 first, then I'm going to bring the rook over. So bishop f7, ooh, that's actually, no, bishop f7 is not going to work either because when you do this, the king is going to get the rook. Guys, I'm going to do this move, and then when they reply, I'm going to make a blindfold again, okay? So e takes d6. And let's see what they're gonna do. Okay, so now we got bishop f5. So I'm going to make a blindfold, think of your next move, and you let me know, okay? Um, no, rook g4 is not gonna work, guys, because they could have done bishop takes, and then when you take back, they're gonna collect the, this bishop as well. So it's not so, it's not, it's, it's not as you think. All right, so take a look at the position, think of your next move and try to remember where your pieces are after that. So we're gonna do, let's try to do like five more moves blindfold. Okay, so blindfold, boom, everything is gone. Next move, what do we do? What do we do? King f4, no, 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 rook f1, take the bishop, come on guys, that's what I wanted to hear. Take the bishop, all right. Um, f5, you got it. So e takes f5. Um, okay, rook b8. Yeah, definitely they're not even trying. So I think we could just go ahead, get the knight as well. Now, bishop d4. Now, look at that bishop. Not letting us do, um, not letting us do rook g7. So we gotta, we gotta pay attention to that. All right. So let me see, let me see. Okay, I guess it's time to, yes, take the bishop, rook f1. Now, I'm going to do rook f1 if you like, but don't forget that, I mean, we have to move the rook, but don't forget that if you go rook f1, this bishop is going to be um, in the way. Now, I think that instead, I'm going to bring the rook, yeah, I don't know, you're right, rook f1, let's do it. All right, rook f1, we got one more piece now, um, bishop c3, and now the question is, how can we incorporate that rook? into the game. We got a pawn on f5, maybe we do f6. All right, so I'm assuming none of you guys know where the pieces are. So look, we've done one, two, three moves. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna show you the position, okay? Uh... <laughs> okay, rookie one heading to e7. The problem is there's a bishop on c3 and we cannot do that. Bring out the knight attack on the left. Okay, so I like that idea. So. This knight, okay, the knight is on a3, so what do we do with that knight? <laughs> um, you know, I'm also liking um, something like king h5, I like pawn to f6. Now, I'm gonna go pawn f6, guys, that way the rook can go to g7, so let's go with that. Pawn f6. Now, they took on a5, so we have, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, um, they took on, on b4, so their pawn is on a5. They took on b4, and they're hitting our knight on c3 now. So the question is, what do we do next? Now, I'm going to drop it here. Let me show you the, the, the board. Uh, blindfold. And we're doing Neo. Okay, good. Here we go. All right, so take a look at this position. We should be able to get checkmate here in a few moves. There's, there's no way that this could last for that long. So white pieces to move. They're attacking our knight. Just like I said with the rook, don't worry about that knight, guys. Don't, don't spend time moving that knight around. So the question is, what do we do next? What do we do next? Even if we, if we drop that knight, we're winning by a lot. Okay, d4. Okay, I like that move. Now we're talking. I like that move. That's more sophisticated. And I'm going to assume that you saw this blindfold when the pieces were not even shown yet. <laughs> I think d4 is definitely a very, very strong move. The only problem is that if the idea is to do bishop d3, this is going to be hanging. This is going to be hanging. Okay, d4, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Bishop a6, mm, don't forget, they're gonna take on g8. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, let me make a blindfold and let's talk about the rook lift. 
Let's talk about the rook lift. Oop, what happened here? Okay, so blindfold. There we go. Done. All right, so rook lift. Come on, those of you who already got the idea of the rook lift through the H file, give me a specific coordinate, specific move. What's rook, uh, what's rook lift? Okay, rook lift. Remember that we have a rook on F1. The rook wish it could attack through the H file, but there it's not possible. So what we do is, instead of putting the rook behind our own pawn, we lift the rook, we bring it up, and then we roll over to, inf to get in front of our pawn. So that way the rook could attack. Now, rook H3, guys, uh, makes perfect sense. I was thinking of more rook F5 and then go to h5 and, and I'm sorry, and then collect on h6. Don't forget, there's a bishop on f8, so if our rook gets to h6, that's made. Now, rook f3, rook f5, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna go with f5, it's a little bit a little bit different. And now we got bishop to d2, so they know where we're going and they're going to try to defend, uh, to defend that. All right, so what do we do then? What do we do then? You know what? Let me just bring this knight then. Um, knight b1, trying to get the, the bishop. Then pawn to b5, I'm assuming. Yep. And okay, you said it. Great, great, perfect. All right, then give me the bishop. Then rook c8, uh, no big deal. Let me just follow through rook f5, I mean rook h5, and we're ready, we're ready to do checkmate. All right, so of course they had to sacrifice. So now uh, we gotta take. Now we take on f8. They took on c4, so they took our bishop. And let me show you guys one more time. We're almost done. Let me show you the position after those moves. So everything changed. Now we got two rooks, knight. Our opponent has no pieces left. Now the last thing that we gotta do is finish this. It's a very simple end game. And I know you can close this one. You can close it without any difficulties at all. However. Make it, a, make it a thing to, as training, finish it as quickly as you can. Um, now, I think I could do checkmate in three moves, forced. Guys, see if you can, see if you can figure it out, okay? So I'm going to give you 30 seconds, see if you can figure out checkmate in three moves, or simply the fastest way you can, you can come up with it, okay? Okay, two night moves, what are you thinking of? Tell me coordinates. Knight f3, and I'm guessing the idea is to get to g5. Well, the king could go to g6, guys. So you read my mind, but there's one step because the king could go to could go to g6. 94, and then let's say they take on on d3. So actually, let me make this blindfold right now. All right, here we go. So what's the move? So 94, 95, check. The rook is spinning this pawn, but the king could go here. So what can we do about that? Okay, thank you, Christopher. So king f5. I'm going to go with that. Um, king f5. Now that king is trapped. The king cannot go anywhere. So we got pawn to c3. So now my knight is going to go. Let me go to f3. Knight is going to go to f3. And then I think this is going to be checkmate. And that's it. All right, guys. You know, if we were doing this in training, I'll make you now recreate the final position on the board and i'll make you reproduce the entire game from beginning to end but we're not there uh we're not doing this in, in in person so let me just show you the position the final position and i think this is already more than more than good so excellent this is the the final position excellent checkmate i have to say this is a nice checkmate